current and watts for amps. Okay, this question comes from Mark in Wailua, Hawaii, where I was born. Not in Wailua, I was born in Eva Beach, but yep, that's, that's where I come from. Hi, Paul. I was recently looking at YouTube videos regarding MagnaPan speakers, and one reviewer stated that the amp makes a huge difference in how they sound. He's right about that. He was saying it's not about the watts, but about the current. Well, doesn't uh, volts times amps equals watts? <laughs> volts should be a constant. How can you have a high current amplifier with low wattage? Certainly, the quality of the components in the circuit design make a difference for any audio component, but what is the voodoo that makes for a quality amplifier when driving finicky speakers such as magna planners? Well, uh, you know, this is a, a great example of kind of confusing terms a little bit. So, you're absolutely right. Amps times volts equals watts. Pretty simple. Amps are the current, volt is the pressure, the size, and yes, the voltage should remain constant, and the current is there to supply enough wattage to make the speaker work. All that is true. So, if we have a speaker, and by the way, magnaplaners aren't one of those. I don't know where this comes from. <laughs> I really don't. Magnaplaners are one of the easier loads to drive, in my experience, unless maybe they've done something recently that would change that. I don't know. But, but back in my day, uh, magnaplaners were easy loads, a always have been. Anyway, um, there are certainly speakers out there that are not easy loads. So what's happening is, if we have a very high current amplifier, it is capable of handling large swings of impedance, of reactive components inside of the speaker. So some speakers are easy loads, a pair of Wilsons. I mean, you could, you, you could drive those loud by, you know, <laughs> blowing on them, they're so efficient, right? They're easy loads. But many speakers are tough loads, and they need lots and lots of current to drive their low impedances. Because if you look, if you, you go to Stereophile, and, and John Atkinson does some great um, test results, and look at the impedance versus frequency curve. And uh, like a magnaplaner, in, at least in back, in, back in my day, it was just fairly, fairly flat. But uh, other speakers, whoa the impedance is going up, it's shooting way down. Infinity used to be one of the worst. I mean, holy crowley. Bascom and Arnie would design ways to suck power out of an amplifier to give the bass boot, and you'd see this thing dip down to half an ohm. And when you do that, you need lots and lots of current. But where the confusion comes into, and, and, and Mark's absolutely right, doesn't that mean there's more watts? Yeah! Absolutely, if the voltage stays the same and the current goes up, 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 up in order to handle the lower, lower, lower impedance, if you were to measure that, the wattage is going straight up. Absolutely, amps times volts equals watts. End of story, no voodoo involved, but that's what people are talking about. So we need high current to deal with low impedance, but when we do that, we can't forget that that absolutely changes the watts, okay? Thanks for the question. I wouldn't mind being out in Wailua right now. I'm looking outside and it's snowing. <laughs> Have fun. I'll talk to you later. Bye.